March 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 13 and 14 from the Old Testament. Suppose a prophet or one who foretells by dreams should appear among you and show you a sign or wonder, and a sign or wonder should come to pass concerning what he said to you, namely, let us follow other gods, gods whom you have not previously known, and let us serve them. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer, for the Lord your God will be testing you to see if you love him with all your mind and being. You must follow the Lord your God and revere only him, and you must observe his commandments, obey him, serve him, and remain loyal to him. As for that prophet or dreamer, he must be executed because he encouraged rebellion against the Lord your God, who brought you from the land of Egypt redeeming you from that place of slavery, and because he has tried to entice you from the way the Lord your God has commanded you to go. In this way, you must purge out evil from within. Suppose your own full brother, your son, your daughter, your beloved wife, or your closest friend should seduce you secretly and encourage you to go and serve other gods that neither you nor your ancestors have previously known the gods of the surrounding people, whether near you or far from you, from one end of the earth to the other. You must not give in to him or even listen to him. Do not feel sympathy for him or spare him or cover up for him. Instead, you must kill him without fail. Your own hand must be the first to strike him and then the hands of the whole community. You must stone him to death because he tried to entice you away from the Lord, your God, who delivered you from the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. Thus all Israel will hear and be afraid. No longer will they continue to do evil like this among you. Suppose you should hear in one of your cities, which the Lord your God is giving you as a place to live, that some evil people have departed from among you to entice the inhabitants of their cities, saying, Let's go and serve other gods, whom you have not known before. You must investigate thoroughly and inquire carefully. It is indeed true that such a disgraceful thing is being done among you. You must by all means slaughter the inhabitants of that city with the sword, annihilate with the sword everyone in it, as well as the livestock. You must gather all of its plunder into the middle of the plaza and burn the city and all its plunder as a whole burnt offering to the Lord, your God. It will be an abandoned ruin forever. It must never be rebuilt again. You must not take for yourself anything that has been placed under judgment. Then the Lord will relent from his intense anger, show you compassion, have mercy on you, and multiply you as he promised your ancestors. Thus you must obey the Lord your God, keeping all his commandments that I am giving you today and doing what is right before him. You are children of the Lord your God. Do not cut yourselves or shave your forehead bald for the sake of the dead. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. He has chosen you to be his people prized above all others on the face of the earth. You must not eat any forbidden thing. These are the animals you may eat. The ox, the sheep, the goat, the ibex, the gazelle, the deer, the wild goat, the antelope, the wild oryx, and the mountain sheep. You may eat any animal that has hooves divided into two parts and that chews the cud. However, you may not eat the following animals among those that chew the cud or those that have divided hooves, the camel, the hare, and the rock badger. Although they chew the cud, they do not have divided hooves and are therefore ritually impure to you. Also the pig is ritually impure to you. Though it has divided hooves, it does not chew the cud. You may not eat their meat or even touch the remains. These you may eat from among water creatures. Anything with fins and scales you may eat. But whatever does not have fins and scales you may not eat. It is ritually impure to you. All ritually clean birds you may eat. These are the ones you may not eat. The eagle the vulture, the black vulture, the kite, the black kite, the dea after its species, 
every raven after its species, the ostrich, the owl, the seagull, the falcon after its species, the little owl, the long-eared owl, the white owl, the jackdaw, the carrion vulture, the cormorant, the stork, the heron after its species, the hoopoe, the bat, and any winged thing on the ground are impure to you. They may not be eaten. You may eat any clean bird. You may not eat any corpse, though you may give it to the resident foreigner who is living in your villages, and he may eat it, or you may sell it to a foreigner. You are a people holy to the Lord your God. Do not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. You must be certain to tithe all the produce of your seed that comes from the field year after year. In the presence of the Lord your God, you must eat from the tithe of your grain, your new wine, your olive oil, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks in the place he chooses to locate his name, so that you may learn to revere the Lord your God always. When he blesses you, if the place where he chooses to locate his name is distant, you may convert the tithe into money, secure the money, and travel to the place the Lord your God chooses for himself. Then you may spend your money however you wish for cattle, sheep, wine, beer, or whatever you desire. You and your household may eat there in the presence of the Lord your God and enjoy it. As for the Levites in your villages, you must not ignore them, for they have no allotment or inheritance along with you. At the end of every three years, you must bring all the tithe of your produce in that very year, and you must store it up in your villages. Then the Levites, because they have no allotment or inheritance with you, the resident foreigners, the orphans, and the widows of your villages may come and eat their fill, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work you do. God, I'm not one of the end of times doomsday type of people. Uh, I believe that when you're ready to send your son back, that's when the end of the world will come. Uh, I enjoy studying it, but I'm not a person who's going to argue about it. However, your statement in chapter 13 in the first section about prophets and dreamers who try and sway us away from other gods I see that so much and I'm starting to see it more and more and I'm starting to actually see it more and more in the so-called leaders of the Christian church and that gets really scary. I see them leading us away from the one true God. Commandment number one, we shall have no other gods before us. And we live in the land of milk and honey as Americans. And we have so much available to us. And it's so easy to have things become gods. And so we have Christian, so-called Christian pastors out there teaching a prosperity doctrine. Empowerment of the self. Making money as long as you give your 10% back to God. Money then becomes that God. Ego then becomes that God. We don't even need somebody outside the faith to come and lead us away. Our desire for things of the world are alluring enough to keep us caught up in sin. I think about your commandment of what we need to do with these people that lead us away from you. Yet a lot of times these people who lead us away from you are ourselves. We choose to listen to very secular music. We choose to go to very secular type of movies. We choose to put those things of the world right in front of us constantly. I was reading an article the other day about Jay-Z. Big, huge, popular singer, incredibly wealthy, has incredible influence on lots of people in this world. And his songs include lyrics like, Jesus can't save you. Life starts when the church ends. And I have so many people who say, oh, but I just listen to it for the music. I don't really listen to the lyrics. Do you honestly think that those lyrics aren't getting into your heart and your mind? God, we have so many other gods before you. And if we're going to start stoning people, we're going to have to start with ourselves and calling ourselves out. 
our sins, our gods, especially of first world countries, our comfort, wealth, money. We get to wake up in the morning in a warm bed. We get to choose clothes. How often have you heard us say, I can't, I don't have anything to wear today. As opposed to the rest of the world that truly doesn't have anything to wear today. We get to choose from a plethora of food in our kitchen of what we want to have for breakfast. We get to go to school and be educated or to work to a job and actually make more money. We have cars that take us there. We have places along the way we can stop and get fresh coffee. We have so many things that we have chosen to put into our lives that distract us from you, God, that become our other gods. Too often we dismiss what you're saying in the Bible because we don't think of it in terms of what was happening all those years ago. Most of us don't have some sort of carved wooden golden idol sitting on a mantle someplace. But boy, do we have gods in our lives. Help us today, God. Help us to identify those gods. Help us to realize what an incredible effect they are having on our lives and how much they are distancing us from you. And more importantly, are distancing us from what we can do for you in this world. Fill our lives with things that are good and pure and glorifying to you. God, please just take off the filters of everything that we've made okay to have and be and see and listen to in this world and show us very clearly just how far off base we really, really are. Help us to become pure. Help us to focus only on you as our one God. In your son's name we pray. Amen.